The top stories tonight in Wine News. The Commission on Elections is now willing to study proposals to extend voter registration. The Philippine National Police orders heightened police visibility in public places in preparation for the holidays. DTI vows to monitor the implementation of price increase in some basic goods. Malacanang defends the government's deal with controversial medical supplier Farmali and makes some clarifications on the Aquino administration's purchase of personal protective equipment or PPE. United States military denied reports of leaving military dogs in Afghanistan. Weather disasters becoming more frequent and costly according to World Meteorolog Meteorological Organization. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Kazan City. Today is Thursday, September 2, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, Callas defends government's deal with controversial medical supplier formally. Meanwhile, presidential spokesperson Hadi Roque made some clarifications on the Aquino administration's purchase of personal protective equipment or PPE. Rosa Cruz reports. Malacanang finds nothing wrong with the government's transaction with controversial formerly pharmaceutical corporation. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the government did not conduct background checks on the officials of the supplier because it is not required by law. Sa batas po, we have a principle that the corporation has a separate personality, separate and distinct from the stockholders. E ang nagbid po, yung korporasyon. So hindi naman po kinakailangan busisiin talaga yung personalidad na sa likod ng korporasyon kasi nga po, separate personality yon. Meanwhile, the palace spokesman clarified that he never accused the previous administration of buying overpriced personal protective equipment. Mga kababayan, Bago natin i-conclude na nagkaroon ng pandarambong at nagkaroon ng overpriced, tanungin natin, overpriced ba ang 1,950? Ganong nabili ang exact same PPE na level 4 na halagang 3,5. Pero hindi ko naman po sinasabi na overpriced din yung 3,5. He also denied diverting the public's attention away from the Senate's investigation of government's purchase of allegedly overpriced COVID-19 safety gear in response to Senator Franklin Drillon. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The health department was questioned over the slow utilization of COVID-19 funds. As of June, there were still an obligated allotments worth 51.18 billion pesos. Aiko Miguel details why live. Yes, Aiko. Yes, Harleen, Deputy Minority Leader and Marikina City Representative Estela Luz Kimbo has asked the Department of Health to explain the unobligated 51.8 billion pesos from the agency's COVID-19 funds. Representative Kimbo was wondering why there is still a huge amount left unspent while the country continues to battle the pandemic. The lawmaker also asked if the said amount could be used to fund the Special Risk Allowance or SRA of frontline medical workers. Uh, naghahanap tayo ng pondo para sa SRA ng ating frontliners at hindi natin malaman saan kukunin yan. Pwede pa natin gamitin ito? Harleen Health Secretary Francisco Duque III said that he has not seen the reports but stresses that, he, that this could continue or be continued to be utilized until the end of the year. Secretary Duque also said they will look for programs that are of list priority from which they can get funds for the Healthcare Workers SRA. The remaining uh, 51.2 billion, as uh, stated, 
I uh, believe will continue to be uh, utilized for the remaining of the year. Uh, this is part of the 2021 uh, budget. Uh, offhand, we're looking at the butika ng uh, barangay, but that is uh, not uh, substantial. It's less than, uh, I think, about less than three or four hundred million, but uh, it will help. Uh, but there are, uh, is a list that we will have to uh, review, uh, which among this uh, has not really uh, given much impact historically. So we will uh, make an assessment. And that is the latest live. Back to you, Harley. Thank you, Aiko Miguel, reporting live. Meanwhile, the government is eyeing to shift to granular lockdowns instead of city or provincial-wide quarantine restrictions. This proposal is being supported by different government agencies and is now up for final approval of the Interagency Task Force on COVID-19. Meanwhile, local government units in the National Capital Region has already started implementing it. Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why. The Metro Manila Council will let the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases to decide on the quarantine classification that will be implemented in the National Capital Region. But NCR mayors prefer to implement granular lockdowns instead of city or provincial-wide community quarantine restrictions. The proposal is also supported by various government agencies to curb the increase in COVID-19 cases. It gives a lot of flexibility, lalo na sa mga mayors or even to region itself. At hindi lang yung mapipid point mo kung saan ka dapat magluwang to make sure gumanda na rin na ekonomiya natin. As of today, more than 3,000 areas in National Capital Region are already under granular lockdowns due to the rising COVID-19 cases. Interior and Local Government Spokesperson Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya assures that the national and local government will provide assistance to affected households. Sinisiguro po ng uh, national government na meron pong augmentation na ibibigay ang uh, national government kung sakasakali pong mag impose ng granular lockdown ang mga local government units. Ang tulong pong may bibigay natin is through the DSWD. Ibig pong sabihin, dun sa dalawang linggong granular lockdown, uh, sa pangalawang linggo po papasok ang uh, uh, DSWD and the national government para magbigay ng tulong uh, para dun sa mga uh, naka-lockdown. Meanwhile, Philippine National Police Chief Police General Guillermo Eldazar said he has ordered officers to coordinate with the respective LGUs to prepare for the possible imposition of granular lockdowns. Ito ay isang proposal pa lamang, subalit mas maigi ng pagandan ito ng maaga upang hindi na magdulot ng karituhan na maaaring mauwi sa hindi pagkakunawaan kung sakaling maprobahan ito. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, We Serve the People, We Give Glory to God. Despite the demand of Filipino nurses abroad, the Philippines' deployment cap for healthcare workers will remain. According to the Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, the country needs an additional of more than 120,000 nurses to fill the big gap on the nurse-to-patient ratio. Here's Ray Pelayo to explain why. The Philippine Nurses Association, or PNA, believes that the number of nurses in the country is enough. According to PNA President Melbert Reyes, based on the records of the Professional Regulation Commission or PRC, around 600,000 nurses have an active license. Reyes noted that Filipino nurses prefer to work abroad because of the good benefits there. Even if nurses stay in the Philippines, Reyes says they prefer to work on other jobs because of the unpleasant health facilities. Kahit po dumami ang nurses at wala naman kayong ino-offer na maganda sa, go sa go gobyerno no? and even yung mga private hospitals, no one, will wor no one will work. Hindi natin kailangan problemahin kung kulang ba o hindi. Dahil kahit po marami ang bottom line, hindi, hindi sila nagtatrabaho sa hospital. But based on the records shown by Labor Assistant Secretary Nikki Tutay, almost 340,000 nurses are either migrant or with working contract abroad and more than 183,000 are employed in their field in the country. There are also around 70,000 nurses that are either unemployed or working in other fields. 
The official noted that the Philippines needs around 120,000 nurses more to fill the gap and follow the ratio of 24 nurses for every 10,000 population. Kung meron kang mahuhugot na 70,000 either doon sa mga hindi nagtatrabaho o nagtatrabaho sa ibang sektor, uh, kulang pa rin po yung uh, ating uh, supply po ng nurses. Dole is also coordinating with the Commission on Higher Education to consider schools that has moratorium for nursing enrollees to increase the number of students. ASIC Tutay noted that after the suspension of the board exam last year, there are no new nurses registered and only 5,000 nurses passed the nursing board this year. The Philippines produces an average of 20 to 30,000 new registered nurses annually. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III said that they are not yet recommending to increase the deployment cap for healthcare workers. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A group of healthcare workers are seeking equal benefits for medical personnel that are on a contract of service. JP Nunez reports why. Healthcare workers in the front line still demand the payment of their special risk allowance or SRA and other benefits. Aside from this, the Alliance of Health Workers is seeking equal benefits for contractual workers. Ito yung nakakalungkot po ano, kasi parang binitipid nila yung budget pang karusugan pero uh, sa usapin ng uh, manpower, uh, essential at, at necessary ang kanilang function bilang mga health workers para sa buhay ng ating mga kababayan. Kaya dapat hindi na sana, itigil na sana yung, ano, yung contractualization sa mga health workers. Robert Mendoza, the national president of the group, insists that medical workers that are on a contract service also risk their lives to respond in the COVID-19 pandemic. Ang virus naman, hindi naman namimili kung contractual ka ba uh, or permanent ka ba. Kaya ang nagtatrabaho lahat sa hospital or any health facilities ay talagang ano, high risk ka sa virus. Kaya dapat kung ano mga natatanggap ng mga regular employees, ay patanggap din ng ating mga contractual employees. One of their chapter presidents says contractual medical workers in their hospital receive benefits from the government, but the risk outweighs the benefits. Yung mga contractuals namin na talagang nag-hired yung ang si Reyes at saka yung from, from Department of Health po, nakatanggap po sila ng beneficyo. Po sa amin sa ngayon sir, talagang super super sagad po talaga ang understaffing namin kasi po nagkakasabay-sabay na sa isang ward ilan po ang makakwarantine. The Department of Health earlier said they are working to augment an additional fund for the special risk allowance and benefits of healthcare workers. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Health or DOH reported that the Philippines has recorded 16,621 new COVID-19 cases bringing the cumulative tally to 2,020,484. In its 4 p.m. bulletin, the DOH said the country's number of active cases is currently at 146,510. Of this, 96.2% are mild, 1.1% are asymptomatic, 0.99% are moderate, 1.1% are severe, and 0.6% are in critical condition. The fresh tally does not include data from five accredited testing laboratories that failed to submit on time, the DOH noted. Meanwhile, the number of patients who recovered from the viral disease rose by 10,965 to a total of 1,840,294. Deaths related to COVID-19 also went up to 33,680 with 148 new fatalities. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has reached 218,516,637, while the deaths have surged to 4,544,610, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. is the worst hit country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 39 million, 399,080 and 642,093 respectively, according to the CSSE. In terms of infections, India follows with 32,857,937 cases and 439,529 deaths. 
In terms of deaths, Brazil comes second with 581,150 fatalities and 20,804,215 cases. Philippine National Police orders heightened police visibility in public places such as malls and shopping centers. This as Burr months begin. Leia Ilagan will tell us why. To avoid petty crimes in malls, Changi and other shopping centers, Philippine National Police Chief Police General Guillermo Eleazar wants more policemen to be visible in public places. This is to ensure that safety and security of the people. Hindi man katulad na dati kung saan ramdam ang pagpasok ng Bermans dahil sa inaharap nating pandemya, mananatili na kalerto ang inyong PNP sa pagbantay sa ating mga kababayan, lalo na sa lugar na dating tambayan kung saan maaring mabakasakali ang mga snatchers at ipang mga pasaway sa lipunan gaya ng Palengke, lalo na sa Divisoria at iba pang mga lugar. General Eliazar also ordered policemen to ensure that minimum health standards are observed in these places. Subalit, pangunhin pa rin tututukan ng inyong kapulisan ang pagpatupad ng mga public health safety protocols dahil sa kabila ng mga pagsubok na ating hinaharap, mahalaga pa rin naligtas at magkakasama ang bawat pamilyang Pilipino sa kanilang mga tahanan. The PNP urged the public to cooperate with authorities in their continued enforcement of the guidelines in the midst of the pandemic. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. In other news, the Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI, on Sunday released the new list of suggested retail price on some basic goods. DTI has allowed increase on canned sardines, instant noodles, and coffee. The agency assures the public that they will monitor if the retailers is following the SRP of these products. Marvin Galas has the details. The Department of Trade and Industry is set to conduct a price monitoring within the week. They wanted to see if supermarkets and other retailers is abiding the suggested retail price on some basic commodities. We just called their attention, sir, para i-correct nila agad. And binabalikan po yan to monitor na talagang na, napalitan na nila yung presyo. But so far, uh, compliant naman po yung mga retailers natin, sir. And we thank them also for helping government na mapantayan yung mga presyo ng mga basic necessities and commodities natin. Meanwhile, DTI has urged the manufacturers and retailers of holiday products to maintain their current prices. Under Secretary Ruth Castello said, keeping prices will be a relief for Filipinos who will be celebrating the holiday season in the pandemic for two straight years. DTI is expected to issue the SRP list of these products by the end of October to early November. Marvin Calas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Commission on Elections has been firm on its decision to stick to its September 30 deadline on voter registration. This despite calls from various groups to extend it to make up for the lost time due to hard lockdowns. But Comedic today said they are now open to the proposal. Nel Marie Bohok will tell us why. The House Committee on Suffrage and Electoral Reforms adopted the resolution urging the Commission on Elections to extend the voter registration up to October 31. Lawmakers asked Comelec Chairman Sheriff Abbas to reconsider the proposal to which the poll chief answered affirmatively. Pag-aralan muna namin, Madam, Madam Chair, if that would be feasible. Okay? So yung after filing, continue kami ng registration up to October 30th. Yes, and... October 30th. Last month, the Comelec and Bank already decided not to extend the voter registration. Instead, the poll body announced the extension of voter registration hours. The Comelec chief added that for now, it is impossible to implement online registration, especially for those who are first-time voters. We already uh, partially discussed the proposal of the online application. Uh, pero, Your Honor, you have to understand na doon sa mga new registrants, kailangan po natin silang lagyan uh, or hingan ng uh, biometrics. So physically, kailangan po silang mabigyan ng or makunan ng uh, biometrics. So kung later yan, medyo magkakaproblema po tayo. 
The COMELEC also announced the extension of the August 31 deadline for transfer of active overseas voter record to the Philippine Registry. We would like to announce po that uh, this uh, deadline has been extended to align with the September 30 deadline uh, for overseas voters who are already in the Philippines and uh, would like to transfer their voting records in the cities or municipalities where they intend to vote in 2022. The Commission expects that there are at least a total of 1.6 million repatriated OFWs that will arrive in the country before elections. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte reveals names of those who have personally reached out and are being paired with her as her possible running mate in the upcoming elections. One of them admits lining up for the list of the presidential daughter's VP aspirants. This report will tell us why. Senator Christopher Bongo confirms that he intends to be the running mate of Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte should she run in the presidential race. This after the presidential daughter named him and Senator Sherwin Gachalian as those who personally expressed their desire to run as her vice president. Nagpalista lang din po ako gaya ng iba. Knowing my devotion to the Dutertes, kung anong pagmamahal ko sa tatay, ay ganun din po sa kanyang mga anak. Of course, my intent to run as Mayor Sara's VP only holds if she decides to run for the presidency. And if President Duterte does not run for the vice presidency. Mayor Sara also refuted the claim of his father, President Rodrigo Duterte, that Senator Aimee Marcos went to Davao to discuss her intentions to be her vice president. The presidential daughter says Marcos only visited her once in May 29 to relay her birthday wishes. He adds common friends also made a proposal for her to team up with former Defense Secretary Gilbert Gibot Teodoro. While some groups, though unconfirmed, have been wanting her to form a tandem with House Majority Floor Leader Martin Romualdez and Senator Sonny Angara. However, Angara in a statement says he has no plans to run for the second highest post. According to the senator, he is honored that some groups are considering him to be Mayor Sara's running mate. The presidential daughter adds she has read from news reports of a possible tandem between her and former Senator Bongbong Marcos. Mayor Sara has yet to announce her bid for the 2022 elections. But for political analyst Professor Edmund Dayao, the offers to Mayor Sara indicate that she has a great chance in the presidential race should she run as president. Uh, many others were deported you know, to have offered uh, to be the running mate of uh, Mayor Sara. So, uh, to my mind, this is uh, a validation no? of uh, what has already been revealed no, by many surveys that uh, she is indeed uh, among the leading contenders no, for president. The filing of certificates of candidacy will start in October. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Foreign Affairs is continuously looking for ways on how to serve the public despite this, the pandemic, one of which is the passport renewal process. Janice Ingente will tell us why. The Department of Foreign Affairs apologized to those affected by the backlogs in passport renewal. Thelma Tundo is one of those having a hard time getting an appointment. She said she plans to work overseas once if given an opportunity. Dapat is September, ano kasi ang ano ko, September 15, magirinyo na ako. Kaya lang, da inabot nga ng last year na ano na pag dito na pandemic, bawa lahat, kaya hindi ako nakapagbinyo. Tapos, tinusubukan ko sa online, hindi po yun ako makapasok, hindi ako makakakuha ng slot. But DFA Undersecretary Brigido Dulay assured they are already working overtime to address this problem. They have put up fast lane on those who have an urgent need to or renew their passport immediately. All they have to do is just send an email to DFA, include your name and attach some documents that will prove your application is urgent. Evaluate ng ating uh, consular team yung urgency. Ano? Kasi hindi mo pwede sabihin mo lang eh, urgent eh. Kaya patunayan mo na urgent talaga. Ngayon, pag talagang legitimate yung, yung sinasabi na urgent talaga, 
ang gagawin nila, ikokonta ka, hahanapin nila ng kusang pwede ilagay, ikokonta ka nila, sabihin lang, kung itong araw na to, pupunta ka dito at waras na to para makapag-passporting ka. The DFA reminds that walk-ins are strictly prohibited and only those with appointments will be accommodated to avoid congestions in their offices. Janice Enhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And for the news abroad, United States military denied reports of leaving military dogs in Afghanistan. This was after a picture of service dogs went viral on social media. Pentagon rejects claims of dogs that had worked with the United States military were left behind in the country. Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby further stated that the ones circulating on social media were dogs under the care of Kabul Small Animal Rescue. Collection of value-added tax from foreign technology companies providing electronic services in Thailand has commenced. RK Yorka will tell us why live. Yes, RK? Mariela, on September 1, Thailand started to enforce what they call e-service tax law that authorizes the, com the country to collect taxes from foreign tech companies. This includes companies that receive income from online advertisements such as Facebook and Google. Grab and Netflix are also within the scope of the new law. Under the new law, 7% tax will be imposed on earnings of more than 1.8 million baht that comes from online revenue. Finance Minister Arkom Term Pitayapaisit is confident that this step will further create fairness between local operators and foreign companies. An income of at least 5 billion baht or 154 million US dollars is expected to be collected by the government in 2022 fiscal year. Mario? Thank you, RK Yorka, for that live report. New Zealand has seen a decline in new coronavirus cases as Kiwis show their support for the elimination strategy. Paul Gachalian will tell us why live. Yes, Paul, good evening. Mariela poll published by the New Zealand Herald found that an overwhelming 85% of Kiwis agree to the elimination plan, while 13% support living with the virus. The support for the elimination plan is consistent across demographic groups, with 46% supporting the goal long term and 39% supporting elimination until 70% of the population is vaccinated. 87% of residents in New Zealand's biggest city, Oakland, are also showing their support to the elimination strategy despite being on their fifth lockdown. With 49 reported cases today, New Zealand's authorities believe the country is on track in keeping the Delta variant under control. Not only has lockdown stopped that exponential spread of Delta, there's clear evidence that our plan is making a difference to extinguish those last chains of transmission so that we can reduce restrictions as soon as possible. Back to you, Mariel. Thank you, Paul Gachalian, reporting live from New Zealand. A rise in children presenting themselves with mental health issues have been observed in the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne, Victoria. These include conditions of anxiety and depression, self-harm and suicidal behaviors, as well as eating disorders. Because of this, parents are encouraged by Victoria Chief Psychiatrist Dr. Neil Coventry to balance online schooling, exercise and relaxing downtimes. The World Health Organization says there are specific ways to promote mental health health, including early childhood intervention. One is providing a stable environment with more opportunities for learning, as well as interactions that are responsive. United Nations reports that weather disasters have increased fivefold over the past 50 years and is becoming more frequent and costly. Jane Robles will tell us why live. Yes, Jane, please go ahead. Muriel? A comprehensive report by the World Meteorological Organization showed an accelerating trend of disaster and more frequent extreme weather events due to global warming are expected to continue for the coming years. Disasters such as floods, heat waves, and landslides driven by climate change have killed more than 2 million people and cost $3.65 trillion, losses over past five decades. 
Some 11,000 disasters had occurred between 1970 to 2019, including Ethiopia's 1983 drought, where 300,000 people died. And Hurricane Katrina, the costliest hurricane, damaged $163.5 billion worth. WMO released this data days after Category 4, Hurricane Ida, hammered southern Louisiana and hopes the report would be used to help governments develop relevant policies. The organization have attributed the growing frequency of weather calamities to both climate change and improved disaster reporting. Thanks to our early warning service uh, improvement, uh, we have been able to, 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 to have a decrease of the, of the casualties uh, at these kind of events. Uh, but the bad news is that the economic losses have been uh, growing very rapidly and, and this growth is uh, supposed to continue. We are going to see more uh, climatic extremes because of climate change and, uh, and, um, and, and, and this negative trend in climate will continue for the coming decades. Uh, while hazards ex became more expensive and recurring, the annual death toll has dropped from more than 50,000 in the 1970s to around 18,000 in the 2010s, suggesting that better planning was paying off. Head of the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, Mami Mizuturi, urged the world's rich economists to assist hard-hit developing countries to invest in warning, system, in warning systems and risk modeling. Riel? Thank you, Jane Robles, for that live report. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Maria Latoza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. And before we close, we will leave you with the final word, giving glory to God. From the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 33, it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And those are the reasons behind the news, September 2, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, Evangelo Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Mga kababayan, bago natin i-conclude na nagkaroon ng pandarambong at nagkaroon ng overpriced, tanungin natin, Overpriced ba ang 1950? Ganong nabili ang exact same PPE na level 4 na halagang 35. Pero hindi ko naman po sinasabi na overpriced din yung 35. Sinisiguro po ng uh, national government na meron pong augmentation na ibibigay ang uh, national government kung sakasakali pong mag impose ng granular lockdown ang mga local government units. Pag-aralan muna namin, Madam, Madam Chair, if that would be feasible. Okay? So, yung after filing, continue kami ng registration up to October 30th. Yes. And... October 30th. Nagpalista lang din po ako, gaya ng iba. Knowing my devotion to the Dutertes, kung anong pagmamahal ko sa tatay, ay ganun din po sa kanyang mga anak. <laughs>